stressed out, guys. It feels good. It feels really, really good. Just got back from the gym. Want to get my protein in between a certain window. <laughs> so let's go make a little smoothie. This is the one I am making. I'm not sure if you guys can see that. Usually I go to this place called Juice Land here in Austin and I love it. I always get like a peanut butter blueberry smoothie from there with protein powder, but it's $8, okay? <laughs> It's eight dollars every single time and like I've gotten it three times this past week and I was like wait I have literally spent twenty four dollars on a little smoothie like a small smoothie like that's, that's ridiculous So I went to H-E-B and got the ingredients <laughs> Spent eighty dollars to make it at home. I got my own protein powder No longer using Michael's because his has broken me out a little bit right here I am day two of my period so I could be breaking out because of that but I'm gonna blame it on this protein powder because that's the only new thing I've been using and like literally I'm breaking out like over here and down here, which I don't love. So I got my own plant-based protein. It's from the OWN brand. The OWN stands for only what you need and it's 20 grams of protein. I got the smooth vanilla. Michael's protein has more grams of protein. This is 20 grams and Michael's was like 24 grams. But this is a plant-based protein, so it's gonna be easier on my stomach. However, I need two scoops. So anyway, we're going to make a little protein shake. Set. Cheers. Let's get started. storage basically I have these two baskets and like this is how these two baskets look like underneath here just chaos just a mess so much I need to throw away um, and then I need to also go in here and just like wipe down deep clean all of this just stain out which I was super happy that it came out really easily so it looks almost like new in here so I ended up organizing these two bins and I threw away a lot of stuff like this is a big bag of trash basically I do think I'm gonna try to go to Target or something and look for new organizational bins because I don't like how dirty these are I want some like clear containers down here some acrylic containers something that's just easier to see because I feel like 
this is bound to get messy again real quick. Yesterday, yesterday I was craving hamburgers, so I decided to make some turkey burgers for us. Which, honestly, I was craving them in the morning, and like I could not stop thinking about them. What I did was I put the ground turkey meat in a bowl, and I put mayo, mustard, garlic. Um, hamburger seasoning and then I just like mix it all together and then I made little patties and the flavor is amazing put some cheese on the top so it can like melt properly and then throwing on some lettuce throwing on two tomatoes and then can't forget the pickles almost forgot the pickles yesterday whenever I'm on my period I am craving salty foods like Big time. I used to be a big sweets girl on my period, but recently my big craving is like very salty things. I've been munching on these pickles as a snack. So good, but they're so high in sodium, so I need to chill out. So that's what everything looks like. It looks so good. I also made potatoes on the side. Nothing like a homemade burger, especially when you're craving it. to reflect on the month that we're leaving behind and set new intentions for the month that we're going into. For me, that's important because it builds a lot of confidence within myself and I go into the month with a lot more focus and focusing in on like my goals and the bigger picture. We're gonna start off by reflecting on February. My intentions for February were to get outside of my comfort zone a lot more. One thing that I noticed about myself once January ended was that I was scrolling on my phone a lot with my free time. I hustled a lot, I got a lot done. I worked really hard in the month of January. I posted seven videos. I was thriving here, I was thriving in my social life. I spent a lot of time with my sister. I was really happy overall. However, I spent a lot of my free time on my phone, especially once my sister left. We all know the disadvantages of too much screen time. We all know what it does to us. It really does hinder our productivity, it hinders your confidence, it hinders with your focus, and it's just not a great thing. 
and I really wanted to go into February getting out of my comfort zone in that like after I finished my work day we weren't just gonna go sit on the couch and scroll or just sit on the couch and watch something on TV we we're gonna get outside no matter how cold it was no matter how hot it was because we did have a pretty hot month for the most part there were a lot of cold days a lot of hot days um, we're getting outside. I made it a point to not do things that were expensive, not do things that I was going to have to spend money, but just going out on a lawn and just reading, right? Laying out my mat, laying out and reading a book, laying out in the sun, walking more, being amongst the people of Austin and just focusing more on living. And it really did open my perspective to things. We spent a lot of time with our friends. We did a game night, which I don't love game nights, guys. <laughs> One thing about me is like, I don't like playing games because I get so confused on the actual instructions for the games. And then whenever I'm sitting in someone's house for a game night, we got two hours max before I'm about to fall asleep, okay? Because once my bedtime hits, if I'm not up and like moving around and talking to people and stuff, if I'm sitting down, I'm gonna fall asleep. Okay, one thing about me is I'm gonna fall asleep. So we went to a game night, it was fun. I was good for the first hour. And then once the second hour hit, I was like, <sighs> fall asleep. <laughs> so that's just my MO. But the point was to challenge myself and to get out of my comfort zone because I know if I didn't go to that game night and I didn't even feel like going at first. I remember the day I was like, Ugh, I don't wanna go. But I said I was gonna get uncomfortable. So I still went. Um, I knew if I didn't go though, I was gonna sit on the couch and scroll my life away on TikTok and on Instagram. So I'm glad I did that. It was very great for me. And I'm just getting more comfortable in my everyday life. And I'm loving that. March is a really special month for me. It's Michael and I's anniversary month. We got married on March 27th, 2022. Two year anniversary, so that's a special month for us. March also marks my one year of being a full-time YouTuber, which I didn't even realize that until the other day. And I was like, what? It's been a year? It feels like it's only been like five months. I was talking to someone a few weeks ago and they were like, how long have you been doing YouTube full time and stuff? And I was telling them like, I think like six months. And I was like, wait, no, it's been a year. <laughs> That's crazy. It does not feel like it time flies. And that, that makes me happy that time is flying because it just shows that I love this so much. Time is just flying now that I'm really happy with what I'm doing. So my intentions for March are to simply stay focused. Whenever we embark on something new, it's normal for things to ebb and flow. Motivation is obviously fleeting, like I said in the last video. And what keeps us going is discipline. And I'm tying that discipline in with focus. I'm just wanting to stay focused with what I have going right now. We're moving into the spring which makes me like so happy it's so excited warmer weather is coming let me know what your intentions are for the month of march what you are focusing in on but a little bit okay <laughs> and let me explain so whenever I would get paid I always paid my bills first that's always just a habit I've always had always get my bills paid first but after my bills were paid I would just swipe my card for whatever I wanted okay groceries swipe 
expensive gym bill, swipe. All the clothes I wanted, swipe, okay? I would swipe, swipe, swipe up until I would start getting a little tight on money that I'd pull back on swiping so much until I got paid again. <laughs> and then I would pay my bills and the cycle would repeat itself basically. And although I had a lot of confidence when swiping my card, I had a lot of financial anxiety. And when I say financial anxiety, I mean every single time I would check my bank account, I would always be so anxious because I just never knew what was going to be going on in there, basically. <laughs> so that's how irresponsible I was um, until I started budgeting, which was probably the best decision I ever made. I went on Etsy, I found a budget spreadsheet. I just started using it and it changed my life forever. I knew exactly what was coming in, I knew exactly what was going out, and most importantly, when I would go to the grocery store, I would have a number in my head for my grocery budget, whether it was $400, $500, and that number would stay at the back of my head every single time I went grocery shopping because I wanted to stay within my budget. So I started making better choices financially because of that, and it's changed the game for me. Now that I'm fully self-employed, things are a lot different because now I have a business bank account, and now I have to file taxes as a self-employed person. And that is where things get a little tricky, okay? Because like I said before, this is my first year doing this full-time, and although it's such a blessing and I'm so happy about it, it is very, very confusing on what to do when tax season rolls around. So anyway, long story short, we got an accountant, which is <laughs> which is honestly the best thing we could have ever done. Michael found one and it honestly was the best thing we could have done. Month to month, I am committing to going into my business expense report that Michael made for me. He did an amazing job. I'm not gonna take all the credit for it, I'm not. He did a great job and he broke it up into different categories like my supplies for my videos, travel expenses, subscriptions, everything. Everything that I use as a business as a business expense, which is almost everything because I film almost like every week and stuff. For example, if I go to the grocery store and I'm filming a video that day and I spend 50 to 60 dollars at the grocery store on like groceries for a video. I will come back and I will keep that receipt and I will go into my business expense report and I will go into like my um, content, I forget which category it is. I think it's just like my content supplies overall. I will put grocery shopping at H-E-B, the amount I spent, which is $50, I'll put the date and I'll put whatever video that that was in just so I can be a lot more organized with that we just send this expense report to our accountant and we did this for last year and he loved it he said it was perfect so um yeah however for last year's i had to basically do all of that in like a couple of days basically i didn't break it up month to month i waited until the end <laughs> don't do that okay <laughs> don't do that so i understand why so many people go back to corporate jobs after doing this for a year or a few months because it is a lot it is a lot. You, there's a lot of stuff that goes on behind the scenes that a lot of people don't know about. And with a corporate job, all of that stuff is done for you. You fill out your tax form at the beginning of the year, right? You work, your taxes are taken out for you. And at the end of the year, you do your taxes. I used to go into TurboTax, okay? I used to go into TurboTax, fill out my little W-4 stuff, whatever it was. It only took me like 20 minutes and I would get a refund and that was it. It was so easy, but now it's not the case for me. So if there's one piece of advice I can give to anybody who's just self-employed or anyone who's doing a side hustle or if you are a content creator, you need to start treating it as a business the moment you start making money from this, okay? Don't treat it as a side hustle because that's what I did. I was treating it as a side hustle. I used to have my full-time job and content creation was just like my little side thing. It was my side hustle. It was just a side gig. It wasn't anything that I made into a business. And the thing is that happened to me is one moment I'm making a couple hundred dollars a month from this. Every once in a while I'd make a thousand dollars. And the next minute 
I was making a couple thousand of dollars from this, okay? It just blew up overnight. And that's just the way social media is. You will just blow up overnight. And it's a blessing and it's a curse at the same time because then you're scrambling to get everything together and you're just having to figure it out. So, but I highly recommend just getting an accountant. Just get an accountant. It'll make your life so easy. Just get an accountant. Download QuickBooks. QuickBooks is an amazing app. It's an accounting app, okay? It just breaks down everything for you. You can just link your business big account to it and it's good, okay? Treat this like a business from the beginning. Get your LLC or your sole prop, whatever you're choosing to do. Get a business bank account, get a business card. My business bank account is through Chase. I love Chase, they're a great bank. If you do all of those things, it'll save you so much time and so much stress, and it'll make you not hate this whole world as much. Like, yeah, so what I'm doing now is I'm going through the app and I am going to go through all my expenses for February, my business expenses for February, and putting them in this expense report. And I'm doing this month to month. So by the end of the year, whenever we're doing our taxes, I just send this expense report to our accountant whenever he's doing our taxes and that's it. And obviously I have to send him all the 1099 forms that I get from all of the brands I work with, but that's it. So yeah, let me know if you have any questions and if you need any help. Just know everyone makes mistakes. We're all learning as we go. This none, none of this is easy. It's not meant to be easy. But if you are trying to learn and if you are, you know, taking the time to learn all of this, that's all that matters. Okay? That's all that matters. And yeah. this last night <laughs> this took me a minute to finish man but i'm back in my reading era which is great i'm going to start love in other words tonight but i just finished the housemate's secret such a great ending man like okay first and foremost if you haven't read the book i'm not giving any spoilers because i don't like giving spoilers but great ending okay great twist I had no idea where it was going in the end. Like I had no idea it was going to end like this. And honestly, you know who, if you've read this book, you know who had me fooled the whole time. She got me. Oops, they got me. You know who got me. Because it was very confusing from the beginning. It just made absolutely no sense. Felt like something I would have written in high school. And that's not in a bad way. It's not a bad thing. It's the story, the plot just was all over the place, but it was all over the place in a good way. Like it just always kept you on your toes. Like every single thing that happened, I didn't expect to happen basically. And it threw so many loops that you just never knew where it was going, but it was still interesting and it still I don't know, it was still good at the same time. But if you haven't read The Housemaid or The Housemaid Secret, I highly recommend to hop onto this series. Um, Frida McFadden is a great writer. She's so funny. Like there are just so many moments in her books where I audibly LOL, where I audibly laugh. Just hilarious because her humor is just so similar to my humor and I just, <laughs> I don't know, and that's why I say it. Her books remind me of something that I would have written because it's just so, I don't wanna say quirky because it's so lame to call yourself quirky, but it's just so funny and just 10 out of 10 would recommend.
Hey Brie, if you're watching this, I had so much fun. I'm gonna end the vlog off here. I think I'm gonna shower and stuff. I am sweaty. Okay, I haven't taken an orange theory class in forever, and that class whew, was was hard. It was definitely hard. I burnt like 470 calories. I think that's what my heart rate monitor said. And I've been trying to do like a running class once a week, you know, on top of my like workouts in the gym with co-pilot. So that was nice to get that in before the weekend. And yeah, so I am done working out. I'll probably work out tomorrow. I work out almost every day now at this point. <laughs> I keep saying I'm trying to stick to like a four to five day split, but I literally work out almost every single day. And it feels good though. The gym is kind of like my release. Anyway, I am rambling now. But yeah, I am going to shower and edit this video. I'm probably gonna have it go live on Sunday. So that's in two days. So I'm gonna try to edit it tonight. But thank you guys so much for joining me today. It was so fun spending the last couple of days with you guys. Let me know what else you'd like to see from me down below. And if you liked this monthly reset, happy March. By the time this video goes live, it will be March. And we are officially moving into spring, which makes me so happy. So happy, happy March. I appreciate you guys so much. And I will see you guys in the next video. Bye. Peace out, Girl Scout. Bye.